Now, as Prime Minister Netanyahu prepares, prepares for a series of these critical meetings, he's also flying in at a time of immense turmoil in America. The Prime Minister's visit follows an attempted assassination of former President Trump, President Biden's resignation from the presidential race, and months of anti-Israel protests across the United States. How will all of this impact his visit? Well, here to answer these questions is senior contributing editor at JNS and co-host of the podcast Israel Undiplomatic, Ruthie Bloom. Ruthie, thank you so much for joining us today. Firstly, we saw last night Biden's announcement that he will not be seeking re-election and, in fact, is endorsing Kamala Harris, whom Netanyahu will also be meeting with during this trip. What can we expect to see from this meeting between now Vice President Harris and Prime Minister Netanyahu? Um, probably something very boilerplate where uh, he, Netanyahu will express his gratitude for American support and also stress is, that Israel is America's closest ally. And uh, Harris will probably say something inane, as she usually does. What impact, if any, will Biden's announcement have on the ability to implement some sort of hostage deal in the coming months? Well, that's a that's an excellent question. But, you know, even when Biden was uh, supposedly fully uh, cognizant, which he wasn't, but even when he was ostensibly running things, the hostage deal was not uh, was not being furthered. And that is largely the United States fault. And that's because um, rather than really pressuring Hamas, there was way too much pressure on Israel because it was knocking on an open door. Israel said, OK, we're willing to do this, this, and this. And Hamas kept upping the ante, because Hamas has no interest in uh, returning uh, hostages that are its leverage. And Hamas has no interest in ceding its rule over Gaza. And so the only way to uh, get the hostages was a combination of military pressure and also great support, international support. And the United States has been extremely weak in this respect. I mean, even though there are American citizens being held hostage, Biden was completely impotent on that score. And what has Kamala Harris's record been when it comes to the hostage situation? I mean, we've seen, obviously, she condemned October 7th, but she's been a little bit spotty when it comes to Israel. A lot of people are under the impression she will be more harsh when it comes to Israel than President Biden has been during this term. What's your take on this? Well, I'm not sure she'll be more harsh, but she might uh, be more vocal in her, in her harshness. Biden had this way of saying, you know, I just love Israel. I'm a big Zionist and all that. And that's not Kamala's shtick. She, uh, the, the point is, they were on the same page about one important thing or two important things. And one is the, this insistence on a ceasefire now, ending war, no war with Hezbollah in the north, you know, this constant appeasement of Iran on the one hand. And on the other hand, this insane push even now, post October 7th, for, Palestine, for a Palestinian state. So I don't think there's going to be a major change in policy. There might be a change in style and in rhetoric, because Kamala also, don't forget, has a bunch of the radical Democrats on her side, or at least in her corner to some extent. I was you know, just the, going to... I was just yeah. going to say, uh, confirming what you said, some of the first people we did see endorse Kamala Harris for this presidential campaign were members of the squad. I think nearly all of the members of the squad, with the exception of Rashida Tlaib, as of now, um, have endorsed Kamala Harris. So that absolutely is correct and certainly concerning. Uh, moving on just to the anti-Israel protesters. I mean, we've already seen they announced their intent to surround the Capitol building and citizens arrest Netanyahu. Given the other dramatic events which have taken place in the U.S., do you anticipate more or less controversy surrounding this uh, speech of Netanyahu? Well, you know, it also depends what you mean, whether there's more or less controversy. Israelis are also the Israeli protest movement, the anti-Netanyahu protest movement, is very happy about that uh, controversy. Uh, on this end, there are those who tell him he should, so who say he shouldn't have gone in the first place, uh, that he should have secured a hostage deal first, 
And um, there are others who say that he should step down anyway. And um, now, in America, I think the only real concern is, is for his security, especially in the wake of the assassination attempt on Donald Trump. So, you know, I think that, but it was to be expected because, you know, you still have protesters in America saying that uh, Israel's committing genocide in Gaza and all that nonsense. So, you know, if in, in America, the anti-Netanyahu protests uh, are really anti-Israel protests. Now, what can we expect to see Netanyahu speak about in this address, as well as his meetings with President Biden? And do you think his tone will change due to some of the divisions, especially on the left in America, over Israel, over its conduct in this war? Well, I think that he's going to take the opportunity to be uh, not to be divisive and not to be, well, I would say, not to reprimand anybody in Congress. This is my assumption, is that he's going to, again, as he did in 2015, stress that Iran is actually the, uh, Iran is actually the head of the octopus here, and that Israel is fighting a seven-front war, but it's all actually Iran, and that the entire Western world should band together to fight this evil regime. Uh, I, I imagine that's going to be what he stresses, and in so doing, stresses that we need an international coalition of forces against this, and also more pressure on Hamas for the release of the hostages. Uh, I doubt that he's going to take the tone that he did recently when the weapon shipments were upheld and he finally were withheld, and he finally. Um, finally uh, made a little video in which he said this is inexcusable, something like that, um, that it's, that, you know, America really needs to give us the weapons that were promised and that we purchased. I think he's not going to take that tone. Um, he's, he's going to probably try to rally, so to speak, rally the troops around the idea that we're all on the same side against the Islamic Republic. All right, well, we are out of time, but I want to thank you, Ruthie, for taking the time to speak with, us, speak with us and share your analysis of the current situation. Thank you so much. Thank you, Emily. Thanks for having me.